start. Welcome everybody. Today is uh, we're going to look at charting patterns. Let me quickly let you look read through the disclaimer. I'll leave it there for a few seconds while you uh, familiarise yourself with it. Oh, mate, you do make me smile, honestly. My name's Stuart. Uh, those of you who haven't heard me before, uh, I'm the uh, one of the market analysts here at uh, Hot Forex. There's a team of three of us working here now. Uh, I've been trading for nearly 20 years. I have four key things I like to talk about. Keep things probable, keep things simple, look at multiple time frames. But by the most important thing is to know yourself. So today we're going to talk about uh, continuation patterns and charting patterns in particular. So uh, trends that consolidate, then they resume their original 10. That tends to be a continuation pattern. They can't. They tend not to last as long as reversal patterns and targets and stops can be closer. You need, you know, for any pattern or any trend, you need two trend lines: uh, supply and demand. That's all the market is about. It's all about supply and demand. If there's more uh, buyers than sellers, the prices will go up. If there's a big glut of something, prices will come down. Uh, if there's lots of apples in in the market today. The price of apples will go down. If next week there's not the, the apple harvest is nearing its end, there's not many apples around, the demand will still be there, so the price of apples will go up. And so it is with anything, whether it's a Forex pair, uh, the price of oil, the price of gold, the price of wheat, the price of cocoa, whatever it is, the supply and demand that drives the market. So that's what we're going to look at today on the on the patterns in the charts. And patterns, you know, they, as I put on there, that fourth point there, they're neither reversal nor continuation until the pattern is fully formed and the outcome becomes probable. So again, that pr idea of probability, patience, wait till the pattern's formed, wait till the candle's complete, wait till the, you know, the moving average is broken or the, the, the floor has been formed or the top has been formed and it's rolled over, you've got your fractal high in. Whatever it is you're trading, patience really, really helps whatever uh, time frame you're trading. So continuation patterns confirm the existing trend or position or it's like reverse to the trend. So whether you're trading, you know, if you're an intraday trader and you're trading the five minute candles and the, the one hour chart is, is negative, but you're going long on the five minute, that's fine until you hit, you'll hit a point and then the five minute chart will you know, go back in, in the trend of the higher trend of the, the one hour chart or the four hour chart. So, so, so it is with whatever patterns you're trading, whatever time frames you're trading. And as with anything in trading and anything in life, nothing works all the time. You know, some of these patterns are better than others. Okay. And some of them work for on different time scales to other time scales, but you've, you've got to make it work for you because we're all individuals. And again, that's what makes a market. You know, everybody that buys something thinks it's going to go up, but everybody's a bought at different levels when they've got in. They'll have their different targets, their different stop losses. The market, the, the big market doesn't know that or care about that. It just does what it does. It'll go up or it'll go down. So it's all about, you know, getting in, getting out and taking your your little profit or your little loss and then getting on to the next one. And that's all trading is. And it's as simple as that. All these indicators, all the, all the stuff on our webinars, everything we talk about, they're all just there to assist you, okay? But nothing works 100% of the time and nothing is better than anything else in particular. Things work for some people and they don't work for other people. I've been in, I've been, I've taught people before and been in training rooms where you show people exactly the same price action, exactly the same time frame, with exactly the same indicators. And typically, you know, 17 will lose and three will win. It's just the nature of us as people, okay? And that's what you've got to get over in particular but these patterns are pretty powerful so as I say all patterns th th these patterns we need supply and demand lines so trend lines very simple trend lines so we're going to look at triangles wedges um, pennants flags today uh, and typically triangles and wedges use the size of the base to measure how far they will probably go it's not an exact science but probability so this is a typical uh, triangle symmetrical triangle here with all the key things in place so we've got a we've got a lower trend line at the bottom here we've hit it three times we've got a higher trend line here so we're going down the tre general trend here one hour Aussie dollar chart going down uh, we've progressed along the triangle we've broken out and that base here is that distance and that suggests with a triangle pattern like this that the target might be up here and that's you know that's what trend lines 
give us. And I'm going to go through all this much, much more slowly and we'll, we'll explain it and see how it all hangs together. So that's all triangles are. This just happens to be a system, uh, a system, <laughs> a symmetrical triangle. I can put my teeth back in. A symmetrical triangle where here, the thing with symmetrical triangles, it's equal. We've got equal, although it's going down, we could break out either way. You know, if it breaks out to the upside because we've gone down, it might have more energy. If it breaks out to the downside, it might not have as much energy. And we'll look when we see let we look at different types of triangles later, you'll see that they sometimes they have much more probability of going in one direction because of the, the demand line and the supply line. So let's just go through all the, this setup of this triangle slowly. So five key rules okay uh, th there's probably a sixth one some people will talk about as well and that's volume uh, I won't talk about volume today because the volume on the uh, on the forex charts are, you know they're not as reliable as perhaps they can be if you if you were trading uh, currencies and, and indexes but let's just keep volume in as perhaps the sixth one or, or 5a of the five key rules so five key first principles okay trend line supply and demand so the triangle when the supply line, you know, at the top is is level or descending, then the demand level line is rising. So supply either level or coming down, and demand going up and rising. A wedge. The other thing we're going to talk about today is when both the supply line and the demand line are going in the same direction, converging. You know, they're both rising or they're both falling. And as those of you that were in um, Andrea's. Um, uh, webinar last week when she talked when she talked about divergence that occurs much less often so therefore that can be much more powerful because it doesn't occur that often so they're the ones that they you know divergence sometimes is much more useful than convergence Eleanor thank you that's a very nice comment <laughs> sorry I was, somebody wrote a very long comment but thank you very much Anna. we're here to help all of us okay that's what we're here for we want you to be successful so Second rule, converging trend lines. You know, uh, when these lines cross, the demand line and the supply line, we call it, this creates the apex of the triangle. You know, so typically, uh, if a pattern gets to the end of a triangle, the pattern is no longer valid. Okay, let me say that again. If the pattern, if you've identified a triangle forming, you've got a supply line at the top, uh, a demand line at the bottom, or demand line at the top, supply line at the bottom. Once the, tr the, the price action gets to the end of the triangle, it's over. The, 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 the theory breaks down because basically, think about it, supply and demand have cancelled each other out. So the energy to go in any, either direction has been uh, sort of knocked out. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's much easier to show it in a pattern than than look at a, the words and listen to me. So, third one is the vertical height from the first contact point to the opposing trend line. That gives you volatility, and that's called the base of the triangle. And this gives us a target for the triangle. So, they're the first three rules. Let me just jump on. I should have perhaps put this slide up first. So, let me just go through this again. So, the first slide we just looked at. So, supply line descending, demand line rising. So, one and two. So, here we have got the f one. And two, these two lines here, one and two, we got a supply line. We can't go up anymore, so the supply is dropping. Demand increases. That suggests we're going to go up. So that's our track one and two. The apex, the end of the triangle, is three here. The end of it. So the price is moving along. So we've identified perhaps at that point where there's two touches, uh, the triangle. So we don't want it to. If the, if the price action continued into the end of the triangle, that's when it would run out of uh, of relevance and it wouldn't be relevant. But what we've got here, we've got uh, we've got it's going on quite nicely, and we've got the base created. So that's our that's potentially the move we're looking for. This number four here. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, and five on here. Okay, so our target is the same distance once this breaks as five. I'll come on to five in a minute. Okay, so we got the apex and the base. So next chart, next point. So I talked about five points. So the fourth point. Is the breakout and the breakout? This is a key, this is a key rule, okay? So the breakout should happen anywhere between halfway and three quarters, so 50% to 75% of the length of the triangle. So then you have some idea of how long. Once you've identified this triangle or whatever type of triangle you've got, you have some idea how long it's likely to last because the apex is the end of the triangle. And again, if the price action gets into the apex without breaking out significantly of the triangle, it's over. So 
but to create the trend line, as ever, remember, perhaps this should have been point 0.1 rather than point 0.5, but uh, you need at least two points to create a trend line. Obviously, we ever, you know, when we talked about trend lines, this is what we need. We need at least two points, if not more. Here we've got three on this example here. Okay, and I'll show you some live examples as well from my from the MT4 rather than just this um, this example here on this on this white chart. So here we've got three touching at the bottom, three touching at the bottom, seven and eight. These touches here. The breakout should occur 50% through the triangle. So here we've got the triangle formed here. We're going long, going long. About 50% is here, isn't it? It's about on 75% when it broke out. So what does that mean? Well, the, the theory says that the, the base, this point here, point 0.4, should be create our target. So point 0.4 and point 0.5 are about the same. And on this example, it did just that. Profit target, same, almost same height as the triangle. But remember, these aren't fixed zones okay these are just general ideas so just because that you don't t you know don't take it to the exact pip because this is exact about counting the top and again you'll some of the examples we'll have a look at in a minute uh, shortly you'll see that um, it's not exact but you know don't don't um, you can't do that with trading you've got to take it with a again within reason everything's within reason nothing is 100 percent so five key points let me just go back through that again um, so you need trend line support and supply given the supply and demand the trend lines cross or they diverge sorry they converge to create the apex of the triangle the the vertical height the base of the triangle gives us our potential target the trend line you know you can't make, just put draw lines on because they think that you think they've got to fit they've got to touch two or three times at least ideally four times well ideally three times at least two uh, so three or four is even better. The more a trend line is touched, the more the more significant it is. So what we're then looking for is to watch this and wait. You know whether this this is an hour chart, it could be a five minute chart, it could be a weekly chart. But we're waiting for the break. And if the break didn't occur after, if the break occurred after 75 percent of the distance of the triangle, it's not relevant. It's it's uh, w well, it's not not relevant, but the the significance of it is weaker. Okay, and the target is the base typically within a few pips usually okay so that's what you're looking for with it when you're trading triangles and sometimes when you're looking at your charts you'll see the triangles other times you won't okay and as I said at the beginning the thing with the with the symmetrical triangle is it tends to be in balance a bit like the doji candle with a long wick to the top a long wick to the bottom it's in balance the market doesn't know what it's doing and again <coughs> That's you've got a bit of an example here before the breakout happened. The word sh wasn't sure here three or four hours ago what was happening. Um, I'm not sure what that, tri uh, that candle's telling us here. So it could easily break out in one or other of the directions. When it does, it can have a lot of energy. Um, but its bullishness and its bearishness perhaps isn't significant as the next two types of triangles. Although the distance travelled tends to be shorter. Okay. Let me just say that again. With a symmetrical triangle, you, your target can be much bigger than it is with the next type of triangle we're going to look about, talk about. But the likelihood of it being achieved is less. Okay, so the 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 uh, the asymmetrical or the ascending triangle, the descending triangle, ascending triangle and descending triangle, the targets can be lower, but the likelihood of it being achieved is higher. That sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because the targets are closer, but these can really go as well. So symmetrical triangles can be very powerful. And sometimes the symmetrical triangles can be easy to spot on your charts as well. So that's a symmetrical triangle. And the rule, those five rules are the same. Obviously, if you've got a, a, a volume indicator on there as well, that can give us some help and indication as well. Um, so that might be our sixth one. So here, next type of triangle. OK, sorry, any questions about the symmetrical triangle first? quick sip of coffee no okay so the next type of triangle is called the ascending triangle okay uh, and I, I've just, uh, this is a real life example from uh, just this week actually uh, from a trade we took this week um, and you can see it tends to be a bullish signal so the supply then that reason the reason for that is again this supply and demand the supply land can you show us again the previous chart? Uh, the yeah, promise. Let me just go back then. Okay. Did you mean that one? The symmetrical triangle. 
Okay, let me let me let me talk you through this again. So, symmetrical triangle, five rules. Okay, we've got to have a supply line, we've got to have a demand line, we've got to have it touching two or three times at least to create the triangle or whatever shape we're creating. Once we've seen this occur, so this triangle really wouldn't have been complete till we got virtually near the end of the of the setup anyway. See how it, this, the third touch has been there, and the, th the third touch on the bottom was only here. So once that was, it got to be quick again with some of these. Um, so the breakout occurred immediately after that on the next candle. So we've identified that. We've got our target from the base. We're looking for a breakout either way with the symmetrical. As it's got here, the stop could be down here somewhere. Um, so everything's looking okay. And we break out before we get to the apex. That's good. So that's a good news. So we get in round about here after we've retraced on the first breakout. We put our um, target and off we go. Okay. And again, this is just tr 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 trading the triangle. Again, obviously, like with any trading indicator, you just won't, you wouldn't be trading this completely on its own. There'd be some of them. There might be a moving average on here that's broken, or an RSI that's t ticking up, or the MACD's ticked up as well. So, uh, they're all never use anything in isolation. So do we enter as soon as it's broke, or we have to wait for the next candle? Well, the rule would be, you know. It, on the, it's the power of the break, the energy of the break. Remember about candles, Omid, that the bigger the candle, the more significant it is. You know, size matters with candles. So on this one, just look how big this one is. It's engulfed. Remember what Andrew was talking about last week? This huge candle here on this hour has engulfed all the previous hours, hasn't it? So this might have been overnight. I don't know what time frame this is, but this, would typic this might typically have been the Asian session. And then this could have been a massive opening up of the, of the London session. It might be, you know, it's it's Aussie dollar. It might be the uh, it might be the opening of the Aussie session. Who knows? It might be a, a news item. We don't know. Fundamental thing that's caused it, but it's created this technical setup. So once that's broke, I tend to wait till it's confirmed. So I would have got in at the uh, the, the next candle after that, Omid. Okay, typically. But sometimes these things can move very quickly as well. Uh, on uh, so you know, if you're trading this as an hour. Uh, trader, that's all. That's a huge candle on this particular uh, time frame, isn't it? So it's already moved an awful lot. So you know, a lot of people would have got in there probably and got out at this after this point here, and that's why it's retraced before it's gone off again. Um, so, Anup asks, if it formed in a downtrend and broken below the demand line, then what? It's the same thing, Anup. So uh, with the we'll see that with the next type of triangles. So here. If it's broken down, the theory would be the same because it's then back with the longer term trend. See how the longer term trend's gone there? It's had the energy to turn around because it's it, so this is reversed. This would be called a consolidation if it had gone with the uh, trend. So, yes, it would be bearish continuation. I'll come on to that in a, uh, in a minute. Absolutely. Oh, that's what you know, Omid, that, that you know, they, these are the sort of things that happen. You just got to, and, and the more experience you get, the more you see these things happening. You'll 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 get some sort of comfort with them. So, bearish ascending triangle, i.e., triangle pointing up. So here we have the supply line is flat or falling. So therefore, that's suggesting to me, isn't it, that the buyers are in the buyers are in charge, or the bears have been defeated. So here, this is a real life example from. Uh, although I didn't use the triangle to trade this on Monday, but this is a real life example from Monday where we took a long trade on the uh, the pound yen. On the break, on you know, you know how I trade. I like look, look for the break of the 20-day moving average, and that's what we got in here. So, but the triangle was also telling us this is quite bullish, and, it, and the triangle pattern here is suggesting that there's more, there's potential more energy in this, because here the supply line is this support level. Oh my, turn, which have happened again. This is a really good example because it happens to coincide with the 200-day moving average. Again, I've got lots of other indicators on here to help us pop in the right direction. So the supply line that was broken. When it did break after the 20 day moving out. So, again, a lot of people might have been trading this triangle here, waiting for that break. Wait, again, a lot of people would have been waiting for this. And that, so, all that, so there's buyers here, which was me. There was buyers breaking the triangle, which, and there would have been buyers when the 200 day moving average broke. So, all that buying has been consumed in that huge candle yesterday. And I haven't looked at the charts today, but I think there be, might be a bit of a retrace, or there might be even more energy going up because we've had one, two, three, four, five. Up candle, so a bit of a retrace today, and then perhaps off up up here. Who knows? But that's what our ascending triangle is telling us here. So the base here is here. We've broken out about that's a well, it's less than 75%, isn't it, of the triangle? We've touched it one, two, three, four times. 
one, two, three times here. So that's the the triangle is valid. So the yellow lines forming our triangle, our apex is out here. We've broken out before that. The moving averages are telling us let's go. So demand line rising, typically very bullish pattern, the ascending triangle. Okay. Oh, made that. Yes, it, is, that, is that comment about the pound? I think is that a comment about the pound or not quite sure what that is, but yes. Okay, so that's the ascending triangle. So therefore, what's the opposite of the ascending triangle? That's a real question. Anybody? <laughs> so yes, descending triangle. Absolutely. Thank you. Nobody actually answered that, but never mind. I'm talking to myself. Am I talking to myself? No. Very good, Norman. Oh, mate, thank you. Yes, descending triangle. So the reverse of that is the demand line is flat, bulls defeated, supply line falling, bears in charge, pan is bearish. So again, oh, too many yellow lines on this one. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, you see the theory here. So here, dollar CAD on the daily. What's the other one? I can't remember the other ones are daily. But again, this these work on all different time frames. We've touched here once, twice, three, four, five times. Our supply bottom here it was formed about here I've no you'd have noticed it when it popped down popped back up oh look at that then one two three four five six seven eight nine days it didn't break oh it's getting to the end but no just on that just on the you know we're about probably over 75 percent there aren't we I would guess that's probably a bit so that would amount is it valid well it certainly broke through so is our target still valid? Well, it actually did it. So there, it's a bit over the 75, but there's lots of other things saying because we were we couldn't get under the, the other things here. We couldn't get over the 20-day moving average. Um, the parabolic stars had flipped. We'd had a big move down. So that would be, you know, that could you would have got in on that day on this one. We're at the bottom of the bond demand. A bit more, bit more weakness. Return, yeah, and on off we went again. So again, the base forming the target. Uh, the breakout was a bit over 75 percent there so you'd have perhaps questioned that but the other indicators were helping you the par as I say the parabolic stars had flipped we couldn't break over the 20 day moving average well with the trend we're under the 20 day moving average uh, RSI was weak and going down well it's obviously at this point but you know RSI was where was it at that point it was you know it was falling still um, we went long and down so again so descending triangle demand is flat the um, so the bears are in charge, and off we go again. Um, on a larger time frame, uh, this this is very very applicable. I just realised about this other yellow lines on there. That was from a, a a more zoomed in chart I was looking at on this one as well. And this is so this is a a second this particular wedge, uh, sorry triangle, uh, was the second step down that we had. Can you draw the triangle? Okay, let, I'll bring in. Let me go through the theory, uh, Tande. And it depends what it's 22 now. It depends how much, if you've got some time at the end. I'll bring in the uh, demo cat, the the uh, my MT4, and we'll we'll do some do some live stuff as well. Okay, so triangles. We got symmetrical, ascending, and descending. Descending are, tends to be bearish. Ascending, uh, bullish, and symmetrical. Uh, potentially this base bit can be very large and we need to break out and lots of energy in it so again the triangles uh, can be um, uh, short-lived but, but lots of energy in them particularly okay so that's triangles next one is uh, get can get a bit more complicated wedges okay but let me just try and run for some reason I don't know uh, MT4 stuck no it's not the MT4 um, my PowerPoint's stuck. Come along. No, doesn't want to play. Oh, yep, wedges. Okay, so try wedges. Okay, this can get a bit more involved and a bit more complicated, but keep, you know, think about it slowly. Again, it's it's the same, and it's it's um, uh, the flip is reverse. Okay, so when both so a wedge needs to form, like I said at the beginning, when both the supply line and the demand line are rising or falling, so they're in the pointing in the same direction, so they're converging, they're going in the same direction. Supply and demand are going in the same direction. Now that might sound a bit odd. Okay, if you've got supply and demand both going in the same direction, from a charting point of view, this means that the wedge is a consolidation pattern which forms against the trend. So when I'm talking about I've gone against the trend on this particular trade, sometimes it can be these wedges you, I see. 
Now, if it forms with the trend, this could be a fine sign of a reversal pattern. Okay, so if we've got a wedge forming with the trend, it could be meaning, ironically, that the trend is running out of, uh, running out of steam. It's about to reverse. If the wedge is, in, is forms against the prevailing trend, that means it's consolidating and will likely to keep going, if that makes sense. So let me just read through these slowly. So one, a rising wedge in a falling trend is a continuation. Again, let me just read through the numbers and we'll look at the chart. It makes it more sensible. A rising wedge in a rising market means a possible reversal. These are the rules, okay? A falling wedge in a rising trend is continuation. And a falling wedge in a falling market is reversal. Okay? That's the logic to it, okay? So just like with triangles, you, 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 if, it, if the break of the... Cis of the um, of the formation or the pattern occurs after 75 percent the likelihood of it being successful is reduced with wedges the beauty of wedges is that the pattern breaks after the sorry the pattern forms after the 50 percent size of the wedge but it can go all the way to the end of it by nature because you've got rising you've got converging supply and demand lines i hope this is if everybody's following this because this gets a bit a bit wordy and a bit complicated okay so wedge, and then finally wedges typically form more quickly when we're going down than when we're going up that's just the, the theory of the thing okay so let's have a look at some that's the theory okay the written words black and white oh, sorry black and red so let's have a look at uh, some examples so here we've got a rising wedge in a rising market mean a reversal so here we've got a touching one can everybody see that by the way this this chart this is the dollar cat again uh, on the daily again so we've got touching one two three four and off we go and we got a touch of one two three four there so we've got this we got supply and demand rising so we've got a rising wedge the market's going up and it's suggesting it may reverse and that's what's happened as we've broken out of the wedge again after the so the wedge is pointing up uh, we've broken out more than 50 percent of the size of the wedge and we've gone down that's exactly what's happened so a bearish wedge this is the other thing you want to write down a bearish wedge slopes upwards. <laughs> this might sound counterintuitive, but that's what that's what happens. A bearish wedge slopes upwards. So again, we've got another example here on the Eurocad on the one hour chart. So we've got a touch here at one, two, three, four, our, our, our top line here, our, su our demand. Our supply line is rising as well. One, two, three, four. And again, the wedge, we've broken it after about 60% there and we've gone that didn't actually go down did we on this one we just went sideways and then we reversed so it doesn't work all the time like with everything but again this is the, the lower time frames um, the parabolics are flipped and we got down there so it's not quite as strong a move this one uh, so as, as with everything they all don't uh, um, work uh michael you can have a, co a, a, a a copy of the recording and i'll um i'll see what i can do about the pdf um um as well for you okay no problem okay so a rising a bearish wedge slopes upwards a rising wedge and a rising market reversal those four things we're talking about so therefore if a bearish wedge slopes upwards what should a bullish wedge do make sure you're all still awake i haven't bored you too much so if a bearish wedge slopes upwards, a bullish wedge must slope. Bravo, Norman. Louis, go down. Yes, so that's the theory again, remember. Right? These are all theoretical ideas, uh, and, but you can see them repeating time and time again on the pattern. So a falling wedge in a rising trend is continuation. A falling wedge in a falling market means potential reversal. And so here we've got a good example of when it doesn't work. Because remember, it's easy for me to you know pick out charts, pick up things, and show you uh, what's happened already. And that's the problem with technical analysis. Sometimes it's all right to look at things that have already happened, but what we're interested in, isn't it? It's where we're going to go from here. You know, a lot of you have been asking me this morning, well, where's gold? It's back over what um, twelve fifty. This is today's chart on the gold, but where is it going to go from here? What's telling us it's going to go up or telling us it's going to go down? And that's you know the art of technical analysis. And so here we've got a falling wedge going down. So we've got a touches here, one, two, three, four, touch at the bottom, one, two, three. We broke out after, you know, after fifty percent certainly. So that should suggest falling wedge in a sorry, a falling wedge 
in a falling market is reversal. So that should have gone up, but it didn't, did it? It kept going because of that candle, much bigger. We got to this support, which we come back to today, and it didn't. So it was wrong. It didn't work that time. Why didn't it work? Well, we don't know. It broke the 200 period. just one of those things that didn't work that time. So we reversed, we eventually reversed here, but it was a long time after that we probably been stopped out because we thought it was going to go, started to go up here. We rouse all again back to this this level here, the 12.95. So falling wedge again in a falling market, it should reverse, and this time it's worked. So we have moved down, we've broken out uh, after about what 60, 70 percent there at a key level, to 45, and then we reverse back through it, and we did reverse, but for three days, and then we had that crazy Monday where we come back to this. Um, support level again so again quick one that one but it's worked again falling wedge caused a reversal but are we going back up again well maybe because look what happened last this time it broke out kept going before it reversed broke out reverse so it suggests that may be suggesting it's going to go back up it's bounced off this key support level it's 200 day moving average here 236 see or 240 level it's back above the psychological 1250 level so there's lots to say that might go up at the moment I, I don't know with the gold you know parabolic size still sloping down we're still below the 20 day moving average so there's nothing from it screaming to me to say buy that you might just buy it on the hunch that it's over 1250 but you know buying on a hunch you know sometimes takes you out the big down candle on Monday 50% of it's already been retraced so all that energy down has been taken back out so we perhaps we're consolidating around the 1250 is that what that's telling me currently uh, and that's our wedge. So bullish wedge slopes upwards, bearish wedge slopes downwards. So bullish, that should have gone in. It didn't work that time. It did. Okay. And it's as simple as that. And what you want to do is be able to try and identify these things yourself. Okay. So wedges, um, both the supply and the uh, demand trend line pointing in the same direction. Right. Finally, flags and pennants. Okay. Um, these can be very aggressive, very quick moves, and um, a bit scary sometimes. So I, I tend to be honest, I, 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 I it's not things I trade, uh, but I know people that do, uh, and they just wait for these little uh, little flags to form or little pennants to form, and then the, it's the flagpole that is the key one here. So let's tell us what the textbook says. So flagpole is a distance from the first resistance of support to the high or low of the flag of the pennant. The sharp advance or decline that forms the flagpole should be a break of a trend line or resistance support line. A line extended from the break to the high of the, of, of the flag pennant forms at the flagpole. Okay, lots of words. Let's have a look at some examples. Same with flag. So a small, the flags are great. They're a small rectangle, you know, usually against the previous trend. That's the key ones. That's why people like trading flags. They need two or three uh, typically two or three candles to form and that's enough for them to get in it, it sh it's showing the end of the trend uh, and it's normally should be against the prevailing trend so if the move was down then the flag would slope up because flags are usually too short in duration to actually have reaction highs and lows the price action just needs to be contained within the two parallel trend lines and that's why traders like them you know you don't have to think too much you can see clearly that these three or four candles are within these trend line that's enough get in quickly it could be a quite a strong move and that's the key thing these flagpoles can be very very strong and a pennant or a pendant a pendant, pennant I should say it's just a it's simply a flag that creates a triangle so a pennant is a small symmetrical triangle that begins wide and converges as part of the pattern matures so that's typical symmetrical triangle we just looked at before the slope is usually neutral i.e. it's not going anywhere it's put it, it the, the middle of the apex is horizontal sometimes there will not be specific reaction highs and lows from which to draw the trend lines and the price action should be just contained with the conversion trend line. so it's just like the 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 flag that the 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 three or four candles that create the pennant or the four or five candles that create the pennant are contained by the supply and demand uh, trend lines and then it's bang off we go where are we going with our um, flag and our pen and again I've got a great example from just a few days ago on the uh, on the gold chart here so this is a classic uh, flag and flagpole so here we're in the uptrend uh, we've been in uptrend and again it's a bit over one there but we didn't actually move down very much so that one failed here our support here at this this level we've known about at uh, 12 15 we talked about many many times this year 
so we had a uptrend to we hit the tw we also hit the top of the Bollinger Band. It happened to be the top. I don't know whether the 200 period was there at the time, but we hit the 200 period. That was sufficient for enough people. Parabolics high also created, but the flag also helped us because we had three bodies of the candles contained within the flag there, down, down, and that was enough to get lots of people in, and that explains this big downtrend. Where's the next support? Well, it's where we came from. That's the flagpole, and that's where we went back to. So next example, I mean, you could argue that it was there, and it, but it didn't happen. Um, back to the support. Next example, obviously, gone back to this congestion zone. So see how we run down through through the support, back through it, but not we were only under it three or four days. Back to this support area around the uh, 1240, 1250 level. We congested at this level during uh, most of March, and then we took off again with three strong candles, three strong candles up. But we reversed quite quickly as well as we hit this big psychological 1300. We never actually got the 1300, did we? Those of you who are trading gold. Again, classic flag formation. One, two, three candles contained within the flag formation, the bodies of the candles. And that's suggesting we're going to go back down. Uh, so, you know, we got in here, reversed against us the first two days, but off we went within a few, within a week or so. We were back to where we started, back to this congestion zone at 1250. So, another good example there. Of a, f of a flag formation. This is the flag formation where the, the um, trend lines are parallel. And then the final one was our last attempt at 1300, which didn't happen. Um, again, f bodies of the candles contained within the, f the two trend lines. Uh, where are we going to go back to? Well, back to this psychological 1250 level, and off we went down again. So, three very, very strong, clear technical candles on the gold chart there. Uh, if you were trading with the f with the uh, flags and flagpoles on gold, okay, the pennant, as I said before, is tends to be um, a, a triangle. So here we've got the gold again. I've only got one example here. So again, the support. This was the the support we've identified uh, recently. This 1240 level, 1236, the 200 period. Uh, sorry, has created that support there. So again, as we came down, it hesitated here, it hesitated there. So what have we got? We've got a little triangle forming there that creates the pennant. That's the flagpole. How much further we're going to go from from the end of the apex to the top of the pole? And we did that again within three or four days. Off we went. Um, and this is the flat. This is actually the also the flag we identified earlier. So again, we've got the bigger flag forming here. The pennant was up, and the flag would take us down back to this 1250 level so again it's all about um, if you can see it and it's clear it's, you know trade it if you can't see it don't use them um, you know if it doesn't make sense to you or it's too complicated or you've got too many things on your chart for instance that chart there you know it, if you came if you were new to trading that would just say what on earth is going on there he's got red he's got three dotted red he's got two dotted red lines he's got three dotted blue lines he's got a dotted green line he's got green another green line here he's got big thick green lines he's got this thing called RSI below it you know if you were new that would just think well, what is going on uh, but for me you know we've again if you've been following what we've been trading this is a key high 1295 1275 was a was a was a target we'd had uh, when we last went long uh, 1250 psychological 1245 was the support and this 1236 is uh, the support with the new support that's coming in now do you use 50-day EMA and 200 I tend to use, on the daily charts, um, Taradai, I tend to use the simple moving averages rather than the exponential moving averages. I'll use the exponential moving averages uh, on the uh, intraday charts just because they're a bit more flexible. But, you know, it's not a given rule. S set something that works for you. Excuse me. Set something that works for you. If you, if you the, Lots of people use the EMAs rather than the SMAs simply because they're a bit more reactive to what's happened recently. Uh, it's just something I, I tend to, by default, uh, use the si simple moving averages. Um, but stick to them. You know, don't don't flip between the two, uh, because it'll start affecting your decision making process. Okay, so that's flags, pennants, um, and um, candles. So uh, I'm going to bring up some um, new charts. And what time? What time is it? So um, oh, it's actually it's five to five to three. So uh, any questions before I go through some final f final slides I'm looking at the recording because the recording is only 40 minutes because I <laughs> missed up okay 
So let's just quick quick review. Um, so let's just go back to the top. Actually, let's go back to the. I've got. To, I should have had a review slide. Well, let's go back to. There we go. That's my, introdu my introduction slides disappeared. Oh, I thought I had a slide saying what I was going to talk about today. Basically, so s triangles. The key, th key thing about the triangle is the the type of triangle. You need uh, you need touches, top and bottom. Uh, the base gives you a potential target, and then you, the breakout needs to occur before after you know the d 75 percent before 75 percent of the triangle is complete. Okay, symmetrical triangle, ascending triangle, descending triangle have different properties. Uh, but it's all to do with supply and demand. The ascending uh, is bullish. We're going to go up because the supply is flat and the bear, the bulls are in charge. A descending, the other way around. Um, the bears are in charge, bearish, and a break of it, and off we go. Wedges are a bit more complicated, but basically they're converging. You know, the rising and f uh, the supply and demand line are pointing in the right direction. And depending on what's going on, it's either a continuation or a possible reversal. So again, use them with um, an element of um, uh, pinch of salt, obviously. So rising, a bearish wedge slopes upwards and tends to be a bullish wedge slopes downwards. But again, like all indicators, then nothing is 100%. Yes, you can look back at this recording, Tardy. It will be recorded. I always wondered about the flags. Sometimes they're upside down, and sometimes downside. Well, that, that's you know, flags need to be pointing against the against the trend. They can be the other way around, I mean, if if the trend's been going down, and we're going to go back up. The the example I used was simply um, uh, for uh, reversals of the strong trend. So if this was if this was a, a flag this way around we could be going back up so it's again it's the end of the uptrend and it's suggesting the end again you've got lots of evidence to back that up we've got a fractal high we've got the top of the Bollinger Band so the likelihood the probability is that we're going to go down especially here because we're at the 200 period so lots of evidence there to suggest that was going to go down and that's exactly what happened here um, we've broken over so that's suggesting more bullishness because we're over the 200 period we're still at the top of the Bollinger Band fractal high form and again looks like we're going to roll over and we did actually went right through the, t the middle of the Bollinger Band this time again off we went down again so you could again I so I've got my drawing in so how do I put the drawing in but you can see here you could potentially have formed a flag there because that was the end of the but obviously it's easy to look at that now because it's the end of the trend you don't know that at the time but you could have said oh, look that's running out and it's turned around so it's is it going to go back? Well, it went back to where we came from, didn't it? So the flag, so this time the flag is that way around. Flagpole would be back to the support here, and off we within a few days we're back to there again. So it can it does work both ways around. Only sorry, I only used the example uh, as going at the end of an uptrend on these three, but you could easily do it the other way around as well. Yes, Peter, there's a uh, hands. There is a, a, re a recording of the webinar, obviously. So. That's flags. Pennants tend to be just tri symmetrical triangles. Can be quite small, uh, and again, both ways around. So again, you could have had a, a triangle here, potentially, possibly. Mm. But again, you, you, what you want to be looking for is at this end. So here, we could be having, we could have a triangle forming here, couldn't we, on this gold trade? So is this down to support? So is this suggesting this is going to go up? Possibly, couldn't we? You could see see the symmetrical triangle there, or or you could argue. We've got a flaw here, you know. This is our bottom. This is our triangle here, and that could be our triangle. So we could be a, a um, descending triangle there. So, in, in, you know, we all interpret things differently, and that's what it's all about. So, those of you who haven't got the app, I strongly suggest you have a look at it. It's great. It's simple. It's got all our analysis on. It's got all up-to-date prices, stocks, commodities indexes, uh, and the news and our analysis. Uh, I don't know what that chart's doing there. That shouldn't be there. That's <laughs> so. Thank you for your time today. Uh, as you can see, my uh, PowerPoint presentation has suddenly got a life of its own. Uh, any final questions? I'm going to call it a wrap because it's uh, it's three o'clock and I've been talking for over an hour. Any final questions about pennants, wedges, supply and demand, or anything at all? No, five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I have a different question. I know, that doesn't matter. Fire away. 
or type away I should say. No problem. Teradai, we're here to help. And up if you don't want to type it in, send an email to webinars at Hot Forex for my attention and I'll I'll respond to you personally if you like. And up, okay. <laughs> and up, you just need to practice. Okay, I'll drop you an email, okay? Hand speed to the size of the Bollinger Band. Uh, my Bollinger Bands tend to be at the 20 elapsed time, but 2.5 on the deviation. And up, it's okay. I'll send you an email, okay? So, uh, uh, at hands, it's uh, the Bollinger Bands are set at 20 and 2.5. The standard settings that come on the uh, on the MT4 are 20 and 2. They're just as good as well. The just the 2.5 deviation get, captures a little bit more, but not a great deal more. Some people say it's not worth the effort, but again, it's just what I what I use. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time today. I um, no, I don't trade harmonic patterns. Um, uh, I'm quite simple. I like moving averages. I like trends. My system works on trends and breaking of trends and doing something that's probable and something that um, is likely to happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's all about money management and um, risk management. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Thank you all, mate. I am going to go and have my coffee. I haven't actually had any lunch today, so that's probably why I'm rambling on a bit. Right, goodbye, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.